I guess I'll have to talk about this. BVS, DOJ, UCE, or Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Ultimate Cut Edition, in layman's terms, has come out. I'm just gonna let that sit there. There's no way I'm gonna watch that. Well, maybe in a few years, or starting now and watching it at one minute intervals for the next six months. Yeah, it's 180 minutes. It's gonna suck. Okay, now I'm being too harsh. But I really don't want to watch it. And there's just so much wrong with the movie. It's like a collection of good scenes that are strung together by the thinnest possible explanations. But I guess, if there are good parts, and I do need a new episode, insert clever segue, I want to count down the top ten best things about BVS, DOJ, NUCE, or Batman v Superman, not Dawn of Justice, not Ultimate Cut Edition. Starting off, Lex Luthor is not what I'm going to talk about. However, I am going to talk about something that is, alright, an attempt at damage control. The movie did try and make sure that not as many people were harmed. There are a few lines about people not being in the city, that the fight mostly took place on a deserted island, and the basic idea that they are trying not to kill loads of people, like in Man of Steel. All of this does show that Snyder had, if only briefly, listened to the fans and tried to make sure that not as many people were killed as in the movie Man of Steel. However, this is thrown out the window once Batman lures Doomsday back into Gotham on some strange, dumb, and strange reason. But I do need to talk about good things, so moving on. The fourth good thing about BVS, DOJ, NUCE, the N is for not, is the first scene, the second scene, and Batman's rage and origin. I like the stylized, no hold barred, yet still PG-13 origin of Batman. The story is told entirely without dialogue, and it's marvelous to watch, just breathtaking. This is followed by the scene of Bruce Wayne driving through Metropolis during its destruction by Zod and Superman. It really shows his frustration and determination. After these two scenes, I was totally on board with the movie. However, the, after the convoluted story, Batman's motivation was muddled and unknown. His rage seemed unfounded, and his fight with Superman unsatisfying. However, if you own the movie, or rent it, I do recommend the first two scenes. The next thing I want to talk about are the signs of a larger universe, from Robin's costume with Joker's writing on it, to a worn and weathered Gotham, complete with graffiti from different gangs. The entire movie seems to take place in a worn, weathered, and lived-in universe. I would liken it to the first and second Alien movies, with the universe specifically designed to feel tired yet impossibly big. It makes it feel real, and a world where this, things have happened and anything is possible. It's a good way to start the universe as big as DC's. Unfortunately, it's a side note to dumb plot and a b unbelievably dumb characters. Moving on. The next thing I want to talk about is the mystique in Wonder Woman's character. This needs to be talked about. Wonder Woman is amazing in this movie. That scene where Batman is looking at the picture of Wonder Woman is spectacular. The picture is the one of Wonder Woman seen in battle gear in the middle of a group of war buddies. This builds history around the character. Who are these people? How did she befriend them? What is she doing in World War One? Is it World War One? What if it's World War Two? What if it's a different war? We don't know. So it builds questions in the character, mystique. We don't know what's going to happen. We're interested. We have questions about who she is and what she's done. This builds curiosity in the characters and makes us want to know more about Wonder Woman. Later in the movie, she, we see her in the midst of battle. Obviously, she got these skills once, somehow, but how? It's a very cool part of the movie and also builds with number three, as it builds further history into the universe. Number one is the characterization of Batman. Batman is the world's greatest detective. He is one of the best martial artists in the world, and he's an amazing inventor. The inventor part has been portrayed before, specifically with Christian Bale, who is basically the mechanic of Batman. However, what about being a detective? Batman is the world's greatest detective. But the closest he's ever come to this 
is a scene in Batman where he finds out what the chemical composition of Joker's formula is, and Batman's bullet finding thingy. But finding the chemical formula is only displayed through books, and the print on the bullet doesn't even make sense. Batman digitally recreates the bullet and finds a fingerprint on it somehow, but the bullet wouldn't have a fingerprint unless the Joker had put his print on the bullet and then gently slid it back into the shell casing. Batman would have to know it's a trap, but he goes there unprepared and almost gets killed. However, in BVS, DOJ, though the case he's working is nonsensical, we do see Batman and Alfred working late nights, going on the streets to investigate, collecting forensic evidence, and basically doing everything a detective should. As for martial arts skills, the Burton and Schumacher Batman were restricted by terrible costumes, and it looked like the Bale Batman would be a good fighter until he put on the suit and just punched people really hard. But Affleck was the best Batman as far as action scenes ever. Ben Affleck even had the best action scene in the entire movie. He's the best fighter from all the Batmans. Watch this for the sea of life. This is the best Batman fight scene ever. It's not just a fight scene, it's an homage to Batman's skills. It's a dance of death with Batman in the lead, and that's why Batman is the best fighter, and the best characterization of Batman, and the best part of Batman v Superman. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe down below. See you soon, and watch more vids. This is Freezing Incorporated, signing off. Bye.